In this video, we're going to look at a possible solution to the exercise I gave you last time. So I've deliberately not prepared for this. I've not written this program recently anyway yet. And that's because I want to show you how I go about thinking about tackling exercises like this. This is the sort of thing that you could easily get asked in an interview for a software job, at the entry level at least. And I think a lot of people who can write computer programs, they do have a tendency to freeze when they're asked to tackle something like this. There are even software developers who spent a lot of time trying to find bugs in programs, but they very rarely write a program themselves from scratch. And that's going to put you at a big disadvantage if you get asked something like this on a job interview. So I would definitely recommend practicing making up exercises like this and trying to tackle them. So my strategy here would be read through the specification, basically, make sure I understand it. And then I want to find some bit that I can immediately tackle. And I see, well, ask the user to enter a password. I can already do that, right? So let's go ahead. So I'm going to say here, pass. Well, actually, maybe not pass because that's a Python keyword. We'll see it later on. Let's call it password equals input. Enter a enter your password. So that bit's got to work. We've already done that lots of times. Now it wants us to ask the user three times at the maximum to enter their password. So that's a loop, right? Let's have a loop for, I don't think I'm going to need the loop variable. So I'm just going to use underscore for underscore in range three, that's three times. Then we do this. Now, of course we could run this as someone who's been programming a long time, I wouldn't bother, but if I were a beginner, I probably would run this and check that it actually works. Enter your password. Okay. Yeah, it works so far. Now we need to check if the password is correct or not. So we're going to need some hard coded correct password. Let's use a constant for that. So I could call this correct password, but I'm quite fond of having uppercase versions of constants that I also have as a variable. Some people would say that was a bad habit, but let's say password equals Hello. So that's what they've got to enter. And now we need to check this. And how do we check things? Well, typically with an if. So let's say if password equals password. In that case, it's correct. And if it's correct, we want to just print something like this and then exit. So if it's correct, let's say print that stuff, I'll just put it in quotes. And then we quit the loop, right? So I need break to stop the loop iterating. And we can have an else because if they don't enter it correctly, we want to print access denied. So else print access denied. So this is one way to do it. Now, because I've actually remade some videos from the start of the course because I had problems with my microphone level being too high and getting distortion. It's actually now a long time since I wrote the original version of this. Let's take a look at the original version. Slightly different, right? And I see what I did here was I wrote the program so that if you enter the wrong password, it prints incorrect password. And then if you enter the wrong password three times, it prints access denied. So actually, I don't think I adhered to my own specification very strictly the first time I wrote this, but this is also a program that works. It's just a little bit more complex than this. Let's try this one. Enter your password, access denied. Enter your password, access denied. There we go, and it's quit. And if I enter the right password, Hello, we get greetings, Professor Falcon. So this works pretty nicely. 
If you were able to do this exercise, then that's great. If you weren't able to do it, now that you've seen, well, two possible solutions, this one's a little bit more complicated because it sets a Boolean variable and then after the loop finishes, uses that to detect if the right password was finally entered or not. Have another go at this task, put the code away and try it again if you couldn't get it the first time you tried it. A lot of people worry that they're not smart enough to do computer programming, but I think that's pretty rare. This is something which if you keep practicing, eventually you will get the hang of it. If you think about the stuff you already got the hang of, like speaking your own language and figuring out how to operate in the modern world, all that stuff's way more complicated than what you have to learn to be able to do this sort of thing. So with persistence, you can definitely write programs like this and soon you'll be writing stuff that's way more complicated than this one if you keep practicing. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and Machine Learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.